Okay, we're back. Before and after for life. Life. She didn't see the trailer, so no expectations. Everyone's probably gonna die. And yeah, Ryan Reynolds, Jake Gyllenhaal, pretty good chemistry with their interview, so that's kind of like the expectation that they're gonna be interesting at least. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson is in it. I mean, I haven't seen her anything since Mission Impossible. I don't think she's actually been in anything since then. So that's kind of nice to see her coming back. And from what I read from the reviews, it's supposed to be like an alien sort of remake type of thing. They're trying to make it into a franchise. So that's kind of curious. Wonder if that's gonna pan out. I mean, it is. I am looking forward to this because I mean, it's the most realistic sci-fi thing we have. We do find life on Mars, on the ISS. What's what are we gonna do? So that's gonna be interesting. Looking forward to that. Really curious to see what the alien design is gonna be. It's like all tentacles, I think. But that's curious. So, anyways, this is before and this is after. So she said the acting was good, considering. And it was a typical horror predictableness in space. I mean, granted, I give it props for how it was filmed. I mean, that's pretty much the only highlight. I mean, though the monster design was kind of cool, I guess. But that doesn't justify watching the whole movie. The deaths were predictable. Yeah, it was predictable. I feel like if they recast everybody and just maybe had one, either Jake or Ryan or one of them famous people, I think it would have been, you would have liked it more because your expectations are even lower. So overall, I mean, it, it kind of bums me out because I mean, now they're like sort of cashing in on the whole Ryan and Jake relationship during the interviews and all that. But if you're looking to watch that in the movie, that isn't happening. And the characters are pretty flat. There's not much to care about. You don't really care about them. I don't remember any of their names, except for the Japanese guy, because it's show. But, uh, I mean, the first two deaths were kind of nice. They were kind of like unpredictable. I mean, it was predictable that they're gonna die, but it was just more like, oh, not predictable that you're gonna die like that type of thing. But overall, I mean, it could have been better. I mean, it's written by the two guys that wrote Deadpool and Zombieland, and even Cruel Intentions 3, so you would expect better, so I don't know. Um, I forgot what the director did before this, but filming-wise, cinematography-wise, it's pretty cool. I mean, it has that nausea factor in it. Like, I didn't feel like barfing, but I swear probably some people would. And fun fact, the guy beside me was on his phone, and someone yelled at him. I should have yelled at him, but I didn't. But someone else did, so that's good. Anyway, so, yeah, it was okay. Okay, you can watch it at home. It definitely is not a remake of Aliens or anything near it. And they want a franchise. And I don't understand why there are YouTube videos of people explaining what happened in the last 15 minutes of the movie because it's pretty obvious. So anyways, that's it. This is it. Of uh, life. Or, I mean, this is it for the before and after for life. Later.